Before coming to this school, I'd been in my older one for nine consecutive years. If you think about it, it's a double-sided coin, because on the positive side, you basically know all the ins and outs of the place. You become an expert about everything. But on the negative side, getting too comfortable for me wasn't all that great. Getting too comfortable meant that I didn't really care how I presented myself, and that came with its fair share of downsides. If you would have asked any of my past mates what they thought of me, they'd probably tell you, oh, she's really quiet, you won't hear much from her. I was mostly branded my whole life as the shy one. And I didn't really like it. It felt like it could never change. But when I figured I was going to transfer, I thought to myself, this is, this is perfect. It's my time for me to basically leave the stigma there wasn't going to be shy, unlikable, quiet me. It's going to be a new me. Habiba 2.0. I had a very simple plan, with the biggest aspect that I was going to become extroverted. Basically, I was going to wait till the first day of school, I'll go up to people, and I'll talk to them. I'll make jokes. I'll basically stun them with my newly acquired charisma. So, fast forward to the first day of school, my head was held high, and my dreams were bigger than ever. I went into class and approached the first person I saw. I went up to them very enthusiastically, and I said, Hello, I'm the newcomer. Hi, uh, my name is Habiba. A little less enthusiastically, she replied, Yeah, hi, um, you're a newcomer. Yeah, welcome. I was like, yeah, yeah, um, I told you my name's Habiba. I just came, I just came now. Your school's really big, and... She, she just looked away. I thought to myself, it's fine, don't panic. Um, maybe, maybe you approached her wrong, or maybe you, should have been, maybe you should have been a lot more enthusiastic, maybe a little less. I just thought about it, and I figured that, that what I thought was stupid. There's no, there's no such thing as becoming extroverted overnight. I am, I am the shy one. I am a quiet kid. No one likes me. I can't do this. I thought to myself, well, it's pretty unfair that I was born this way, because, you know, I'm born an introvert. I can't really go up to people and talk to them. I can't, I can't start up a conversation. I can't be charismatic. This isn't my thing. Why do specific people have more friends or acquaintances, but I don't? What's so special about those people? If I would ask someone amongst us right now to tell me what they like the most about their friend, they'd probably say, oh, they're so much fun to hang out with, or we have a lot of common interests, or I love their personality. So with that lead in mind, it got me to start researching about what is a personality. This question, in fact, has been asked for hundreds of years with one of the very first answers being found by philosopher Hippocrates, where he theorized that basically the personality was based on four fluids found in the human body. The yellow, the black, the red, and the white. So, to iterate, he basically meant that if you had more yellow bile in your liver, you tend to be really extroverted. If you have more black bile in your kidneys, you tend to be really detail-oriented. If you have more red blood in your heart, you're very talkative and enthusiastic. And if you have more white falgum in your lungs, you tend to be really calm and peaceful. His theory was that, basically, your personality could be a mixture of these four fluids, or one of these fluids could be leading your personality. Another theory was found by physician Franz Gall, where he theorized that one's characteristics or traits were based on the distances found between the bumps on their skull. These were only two of the theories out there, and there are multiple theories out there. But even with all these theorizing, psychologists have yet to pinpoint an official explanation to what a personality is. However, it was jotted down as a pattern of unchanging traits and special characteristics. A personality is made from a lot of different aspects. 
You have a societal, culture, inheritance, relations, and so many more. So you could notice how you're very outgoing like your mom or very soft-hearted like your dad. But even with all this variety, humans, in fact, have a lot in common. In a psychological book called Personality in Nature, Society and Culture, there's a famous quote that says, every man in certain respects is like all other men, like some other men, and like no other man. So everyone here, with no exceptions, shares their need for sleep and for food. Some of us share our undying love for pizza, and every single one here has a specific pattern or habit or inclinement that no other person can possibly relate to. But even with all these aspects and variety, psychologists, in fact, pinpointed five traits that can be found in every single human being, however, with a scale. These five traits being conscientiousness, agreeableness, neuroticism, openness, and extra virgin. So to iterate, in conscientiousness, you could be basically very organized or you could be really careless. In agreeableness, you could be really friendly or you could be really uncooperative. In neuroticism, you can always be really anxious or you could be really calm and collected. In openness, you can prefer a routine or you could be a lot more spontaneous. And in extra virgin, which probably most of you are the most familiar with, as people who like to go out and party and meet new people, and the others who like to stay home and read books and just do nothing. However, this is a widely held misconception. The two terms introvert and extrovert were popularized by Swiss psychiatrist Carl Jung, where he basically stated that a person is an introvert or an extrovert depending on how they tend to turn mentally. So introverts turn inwards, and extroverts turn outwards. It's almost like recharging your battery. Introverts recharge in solitude, while extroverts recharge by being with people and meeting new people and going out. His point was that these were basically the two extremes of a scale, meaning that every person falls somewhere on the scale. And if you were right in the middle, you'd be called an ambivert. It is no secret that being extroverted is usually a lot more preferred. It's nicer when someone is the light of the party. They're the ones making the joke. They're the ones introducing people to each other. But aside from the social aspect or the societal aspect, introverts, in fact, have a lot of positives, with one of them being that they prefer having deeper talks. They like to know what really boggles your mind, what really is on your mind. This also might be a bit of a shocker, but introverts are great leaders, with some examples being Bill Gates or Abraham Lincoln. Another positive about introverts, or actually positives, is that they're careful, they're attentive, they're prepared, they're detail-oriented, they think well before they act, they're good listeners, and on top of all that, they're great counselors. So your introverted friend is basically your free therapist. So to sum it up, introverts reflect more and act less, while extroverts act more and reflect less. Finally, I think I made no effort to hide the fact that I am introverted, maybe even excessively. But as a matter of fact, it's very important for you to reach a point where you're very understanding and content of yourself. But no matter how understanding you are, this doesn't mean that you shouldn't adjust yourself to the situation you're going through. So let's say your friend is having a bad day and you tend to be really introverted. We play yourself up in an extroverted way to try and cheer them up. Or let's say your mom's friends are coming over or cousins who are coming from all across the country. We do these things out of appreciation and consideration. So to answer my first dilemma is, can I change my personality? I think through this journey, I truly realized that there's no such thing as becoming a new person overnight. You can't really become extroverted overnight. The true rebranding or changing is understanding your personality 
knowing your positives and working with what you got to make yourself and your loved ones happy. When we all gain a wider understanding of the variety people carry themselves every day, we'll be able to have a wider tolerance for people, we'll be able to understand them easily, we'll also be able to cater everyone's positives in a way that will benefit our society. So make sure to always keep an open mind and to know that difference is a strength, not a weakness. Thank you.